Good morning, everyone. On this Tuesday morning in November, we give thanks to God for God's faithfulness to each and every one of us um, and God's presence in um, all times and in all places. But we, our work this morning is more than anything about the fact that um, while God works in all things, we want to find those places and those times and be comforted by the places that God works for us as promise. And that is our work on these mornings as we gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. Well, we have our Mockingbird devotional, good news for today and every day. And today on November 7th, Election Day, we'll see if it has anything to do with elections or not. It is by... Um, Mike Burton, and our text is from Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of talk in church and culture about growing and maturing and next steps. Maybe you get anxious when people ask you, what are you doing these days? Or what are the next steps? Maybe you are worrying about your relationship with God, feeling stagnant or stale. For our relationships with God, we generally seek to remedy the anxiety with wishful thinking about being more fruitful. We worry that maybe we should spend more time in prayer, read the Bible, spend more time or money or, or, or money or resources on others. We obsess over our desires. We tell ourselves we ought to be more thankful. The list goes on. It is possible for this verse to look at the situation from a wholly different angle. You have been called by God and according to his purpose. He's not waiting for you to make the right decisions before he moves you forward. He doesn't need you to make the right decisions. With all of your anxieties and hopes, his dexterous work will be used on you. He has promised to bring to completion what he started. As Ryan Adams observes, I was trying to find me something, but I wasn't sure just what. Funny how they say that some things never change. Well, much of the time it seems to us like some things never change, we can rest assured that things have changed, are changing, and will change. Albeit mysteriously and invis invisibly, he who calls you is faith. Mm. Well, on Sunday, I preached about lists, that beatitude list, and how we, when we take it as a list, we end up being very terrified that this is a condition for God's love for us, or God's blessing, that we must suffer <laughs> in order to be blessed. The interesting thing is suffering does come to believers. Um, anytime you follow values you're going to suffer because they're, you're going to be put up against people and and others who have different values or do not hold to values that you value. And that will cause challenges, um, conflict, heartache, suffering at times, persecution, revi being reviled. Um, it's not very fun. <clears throat> and it can be little things. And those sometimes are the hardest ones when the little ones are the things that like are or the, or the stone in your shoe that just is there. And no, it's not a big thing, but it impacts everything. And to just be able to remove the stone <laughs> um, in order to move on, to, to be able to walk 
forward um, without that constant um, obstacle reminder discomfort. We also make lists of how we should, what it looks like to be faithful, doesn't it? Um, partly sometimes it's a way to feel like we're closer to God and feel those promises more often. And that can be a good thing. Like I know I need to hear God's word more right now. And so I'm going to be in the word more. I'm going to be listening to podcasts or, or old, old um, morning devotion videos. I don't know. Um, listen to sermon again. Um, listen to other people's sermons. Read my favorite text. Listen to my favorite hymns. Those can be things that do fill us um, with God's word and remind us of the blessings, the next steps, the maturing, the growing. A lot of times that means growing more dependent on God, therefore in his word. The key is also to hear it for you, not just as a um, obstacle course of like, I must do or like a, an aerobic workout. I must read five verses and like instead of push-ups, I must um, listen to three, two hymns I must, uh, instead of burpees, I must um, go to four church services and then I'll feel better. God's word doesn't work that way. I mean, yes, it might take that long for the word to kind of get through your ear. And that's the Holy Spirit's decision, not mine. Um, so it is a good place to begin in these relationship pieces where you, you know, but more, more, more. Um, Sometimes the question then is, what am I seeking? Am I not liking the answer I'm getting? Am I um, resisting the change that is coming? But the truth here too is to remind us that God's already at work in you. God's changing you. God's changing those around you. And bending you, breaking you, um, killing you, so that you might live freely in him. So that you might live. Um, anytime you add, like, in order so that you can serve others, that puts a condition on it. So it's, we're not going to do that today. We're just going to say, God has begun a work in you, and God's not finished with you yet. That gives us the humbleness to know that we don't have all the answers. That we don't know the way forward. That we can be devastated and wanting to fix something and just can't get there. Um, we can try, though. It doesn't say don't try. But also know that God's part of this, too. And God's planning and timing is important, too. So, growing in your faith. Growing in your dependence. I think is an important qualifier on that. Trusting in God, knowing where to look, not just to do more, but to fill your anxiety and your stress and your worry and your frustration with the good things of God. Um, to balance out all of the anxiety and all the newsreels you listen to or worry about and things like that. Um, there's a lot we can't change in the world. There's some things that we can, and there's some things that will change us. And sometimes the change comes mysteriously. All of a sudden, it just is different. And you don't know when the moment happened that things began anew, but they did. And those are the moments we pray for, aren't they? When we realize we can't. I can't make the change. I can't make others change. I can't make this any better. And I pray and I ask for it and I demand it and I whine about it. <laughs> and then sometimes, not all the time, it changes mysteriously. <laughs> um, something clicks, something changes. And I, I do think that God has a hand there to create a new heart in someone or in you. Um, so that's what we pray for today, that God who is at work in us and at work in those around us continues to do that work, 
continues to bring that hope to us, continues to be the change agent in our life. Um, because when it's God who's the change, it is difficult still, but the changes for life, the changes for hopefulness, the changes for the future. Oh, but it's hard. <laughs> so today we give thanks that God is at work in each and every one of us. Thanks be to God. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. We give thanks for the new day that you give us and the new day you'll give us tomorrow. We give thanks for the hopefulness that um, you are acting change in our lives and in our world. And while that can be frightening and frustrating, we give thanks that you are a God of mercy. And you are a God of, of new life. So console us with that truth today. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray. We pray for the need of healing in many of the people we know. Um, for those waiting for surgery dates and chemotherapy. For those waiting and worrying about children, um, their children, other people's children, the desired poor having children. We pray for those in the midst of addiction and the dependence and the need for God to act in those situations. We pray for um, the need of forgiveness of self and others. And we ask that you create change in these times, Lord, of all the, the things that hurt us. May you be change. May you be love and change. May you be grace and change for us. For the gift of relationship with others, Lord, we pray for the complication of communication and how words can hurt, words can edify, words can clarify. Words can do all three at once. And we ask that you, you guide our relationships and how we work together. For the communion of faith in your church, we pray and we rejoice and we ask that you continue to gather us in. You continue to make us a community of faith. Um, you continue to create space in our, our ministries, in our ministry teams in our volunteer opportunities, in our fellowship times, for others to come into the community and find a place that is already there for them. And help us um, when we struggle with that, Lord, so that um, we can continue to be working together and, and growing in ways that we never anticipated and that we need. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for our Congress and our judicial branch. We pray for our local government. We pray for this day of national elections. Um, for what it means to serve in that way. And for the, um, the struggle we've been having as a country in our leadership, in trusting each other, in, in putting such stark lines between one another, in being unyielding and uncompromising. It's hard, Lord, when we paint it in ways of, of ultimate concern. Help us to remember that you have the matters of ultimate concern in your hands. And that we are all but servants. And we are all in need of your forgiveness and your guidance 
and your um, and you. So be in the midst of what is to come and what currently is. And for people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, we pray. We pray for the Israel-Palestinian conflict and the neighbors around them as they respond or don't respond. We pray for peace for those who are, are in fear of their lives and livelihoods. We pray for the infrastructure that's needed. And we pray for the, um, also that Ukraine and Russia, um, other places in our world that in need are in need of your, your peace in the, the ravages of what we can do to one another in our sin. And for all who work for peace and international harmony, Help us to be humble and truly work for consensus and what, what is needed um, for the preservation of life and for um, the common humanity of one another. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we pray. And for the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, guide us, remind us, help us to be beacons of your light and your word so that it might change hearts and give faith. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us in your mighty power that you may not we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. And all we do direct us to the filling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.